video, I am going to show you how to create and change shapes when using Tinkercad. With that, I'll show you how to add a shape, change its size, move the shapes around, duplicate them, stack a couple of shapes together, and most importantly, when you make a mistake, deleting a shape. Here is my blank work plane. If you didn't watch my last video, make sure you check that out and I show you a quick tour of the basic tools in Tinkercad. I will be using this cube a lot to change the view, so just keep that in mind, that's where I'm headed. Over here on the far right are my basic shapes, which is what you will be using quite a bit when getting started in Tinkercad. I can scroll up and down to see the different shapes I have to work with, but think of them like clay. They don't have to stay exactly how they're shown. You can definitely move them around into the exact shape that you would like. They also are different colors. That's only because it will help you as a designer to see where the different shapes are. But when they are actually printed in 3D, it will be one solid color. Let's start with this box. So I'm gonna click on the box and then I'm going to place it somewhere on my work plane. I always wanna to remember to try and keep my shapes flat on the work plane. Because if I don't, if my shapes are floating, it will just be in the sky and nothing's going to be printed. 3D printers start at the work plane and they typically move up as they go. There are a couple ways that I can change the size of a shape. You notice all around my shape, I have to click on the shape if I wanna change it. But all around my shape, I have all these different dots. These little dots help me move my shape. These dots will not be printed when it's the final design. This is just to help you move them. So this started off as a box, but I can actually make this into a rectangle. I can drag it and make it longer. I can make this rectangle bigger. If I change the view, I can make it taller and I can make it even more flat. The same options are over here on the side. I can make it longer with the length with this little dot. I can make it wider, skinnier, taller, bigger. So either way does the same thing. The little ice cream cones, there's one here at the top and there's also one at the bottom. The ice cream cones help me move the shapes up and down. So this will be helpful when we start stacking shapes. You notice when I click on the top ice cream cone, it makes my shape float above my work plane. To bring it back down, I can bring it back down over here. It's okay if it goes a tiny bit below, but you don't want it too much below or it won't print correctly. There also is a way that I can change my shapes to be more at an angle. So if I use these little arrows, over here, it looks like a protractor, which changes the angles of my shape. If I wanna get it back to normal, if I make any silly mistakes, this back arrow is super helpful. Doesn't like it when <laughs> I turn shapes. So I'm just going to delete this shape and we'll start over. So let's start with this box again. And there's a couple ways that I can move my shapes. I can press and drag and move my shapes on my work plane. If I want tinier movements, I'm not even clicking on the shape, but the arrow keys are super helpful on my keyboard when moving shapes in tiny, tiny movements. If I really like this cube that I made so I can make a very unique shape, if I love this shape, I don't have to make it visually again. If I just click on this shape and then up here, with all these little squares on top of each other, that means to duplicate, it will make an exact copy stacked on top of the other. This is helpful when you're trying to build symmetrical designs. If I want to stack two shapes, so let's go over here, then I need to click on the shape I want to stack. I'm going to use that ice cream cone. Oop, I had another guy hiding under there. And then I can use those arrow keys to move the shape over where I want it. And then I need to use that ice cream cone down below to stack my shape. Make sure that you turn 
and check every angle. Right now, you can even see these shapes are floating. These would not print very well. They probably wouldn't print. This top one probably wouldn't really print at all. I need to make sure that I always smush shapes together. So like I mentioned, it's a lot like clay. Smush it in a little bit, and that will ensure that the shape is there. Let's show it with a sphere. So I'm going to put a sphere over here. And again, really work on those views. And we're going to stack the sphere on top of this cube. So it's okay that it's underneath a little bit. That's actually really good because my sphere won't roll off. So that's actually pretty nice and smushed in there. You can even copy this whole thing. So if I drag my cursor over those two shapes, right now all all three were actually selected. It's telling me all three. I can duplicate all three and watch. Whoa. I didn't even have to make it again. Now if I'm all, well, I don't even want this at all. I need to click on what I want to delete and I can click this trash can up here. Or I can click delete on my keyboard. So just some basics when you are working in Tinkercad and adding in shapes and making sure you have a great basis for your first design.